In this video, we deploy resources from an Azure DevOps pipeline using Bicep templates. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Seraltos. In this video, we deploy resources from an Azure DevOps pipeline using pipeline jobs and Bicep files. Before that, please like, subscribe to this channel, let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and become a member of the channel for early access to content. Also, check out my courses on Azure Virtual Desktop and Hybrid Identities with Azure AD at udemy.com. Your support is appreciated. Okay, back to it. We're getting more advanced in this pipeline compared to the PowerShell pipeline we created in the last video. We deploy resources to Azure with Bicep template files. For this example, we deploy a VNet and then a Bastion host on that VNet. In order for the pipeline to work, we create a service connection so our pipeline can access Azure. We'll create multiple pipeline jobs for this example. A job is a series of steps that run sequentially that allows us to organize the pipeline. One job will deploy resources with a template deployment task, and the other will remove the resources with an Azure CLI task. We also include dependencies so that the second job won't run unless the first one finishes successfully. We run the pipeline along the way to verify functionality. To follow along, you'll need an Azure subscription with rights to create a service principle on that subscription. Let's start by quickly reviewing the Bicep files we'll deploy with the Azure DevOps pipeline. This example has a repo set up in Azure DevOps cloned to VS Code. We're working out of the dev branch. Let's quickly go over the files we're deploying for this example. This is a simple VNet and Azure Bastion host deployment. It uses modules for the VNet and Bastion host deployment. Modules in Bicep are essentially directories. If you'd like to know more about creating Bicep files, I have a series that goes over creating them. The link is on the screen or below. The main.bicep file is at the root. It's the parent deployment file. It accepts a few input parameters. We've got location tags, the VNet name, an array of address prefixes and IP subnets. And then we have the bastion host public IP name and the bastion host name. After that, it calls the VNet module, passing in the location tag and list of subnets, the VNet name and the address prefix. Let's take a look at that file. Here it accepts all those input parameters. It then creates a VNet. It uses a loop for the subnet. That way we can add a single subnet or multiple subnets. The bicep template will create each subnet we supply. It's not locked into any specific number of subnets. Doing it this way makes this module more portable. Then it outputs the VNet ID. This is required for the next step. Let's go back to main.bicep. The last module creates the bastion host. It passes in the bastion host name and the public IP name along with location and tags. It also passes in the output from the VNet module. We have to supply a subnet for the Azure bastion host deployment. Let's take a look at the module. Here it accepts the input parameters from main.bicep. We also have a variable. We pass in the VNet ID. That was the output from the VNet module, but Azure bastion needs the subnet ID. The variable adds forward slash subnets forward slash Azure Bastion subnet to the VNet ID to create a subnet ID. It's safe to hard code the subnet name in this case because the requirements for deploying an Azure Bastion host is the subnet has to be named Azure Bastion subnet. Next, it creates a public IP address and then the Bastion host. One more thing, in the last video with PowerShell pipelines, we added variables in the pipeline file. I wanted to do something similar in this example, but adding complex variables such as arrays of objects required for the list of subnets is not straightforward with YAML files. Adding a parameter file is a cleaner option. Bicep files are easy to create and understand compared to JSON ARM templates, but the parameter file still has to be in JSON format. There's no bicep equivalent to a parameter file. It's not too difficult to create a parameter file. We can create it by right-clicking on our main.bicep file and select Generate Parameters File. That gives us the parameter file. We then update it with the values for this deployment. Just like that, it's updated. We'll reference this parameter file during the deployment. All these files are available at a GitHub repo if you wanna follow along or just take a look. The link is on the screen or below someplace. Save the file, then commit, and we'll push the changes to DevOps.
Let's go to our Azure DevOps project and set up a service connection next. Here we are in our project in Azure DevOps. In the last video, we simply ran some PowerShell commands. That's interesting, but the usefulness is limited. In this example, we're deploying resources to Azure. In order to do that, we first create a service connection. The service connection provides authentication from the pipeline to Azure, allowing DevOps to deploy resources. To set this up, go to Project Settings, then go to Service Connections. We'll create a new service connection, select Azure Resource Manager, scroll down and we can click Next. There are a couple options for authentication methods. Select the recommended service principle and click Next. Authenticate when prompted. This account needs rights to set up a service connection in the Azure subscription. We'll leave the scope set to subscription. Make sure the correct subscription is selected. We could scope it down to the resource group, leave that blank for this example. We're creating a resource group, so we need its scope to the subscription. Give the service connection a name, add a description if you'd like, and leave grant access permissions at all pipelines checked and click save. This sets up the service principle so our pipeline can deploy resources in our subscription. Let's create the pipeline next. We'll go to repos. Here we are in repos and just a heads up, I did have to switch web browsers. I was running into a problem with a step coming up and it seems like switching web browsers actually took care of it. Verify you're in the correct branch in the repo. This example uses the dev branch with the goal of validating the code before it goes into main. To create the pipeline, we'll go to set up build. And if you click that button and get a blank page, try switching browsers. We'll use a starter pipeline. Let's make a couple changes right away. First, I don't want the pipeline to run every time I commit a change in this demonstration. To prevent that, remove the dash dev under trigger and specify none right after trigger. We'll remove dev and add none. This is optional. Some environments may want to run a build every time there's a commit. For this example, I want to control when it happens. Next, remove steps and everything below it. Now type jobs colon to start the job section. Jobs lets us break up the deployment into sections, giving us more control and visibility into the pipeline. Next, we'll create our first job. We have to add this right under jobs where the dash is. If you don't have a dash, go two spaces from the left on the bottom line and add a dash, and then job job colon. Next, we'll call this job deploy. Press enter. On the next line, move the cursor under J in jobs and type steps. Remember that formatting is important with YAML, and if the tab to complete doesn't work, you may be working in the wrong location. Tabbing to complete moves the cursor to the next line and adds a dash. Remove the dash and leave the cursor in that spot. So we'll do backspace. We need to be in this location to add a task. We're now in the right spot to add our deployment task. If it's not showing already, click show assistant, search for Azure, and select ARM template deployment. This will help us create a deployment task. Leave the deployment scope set to resource group, select the service connection we previously configured, select our subscription, under action, leave it set to create or update resource group. We'll add the resource group, dev test demo RG01 for this example. We don't have to select an existing one. As action specifies, it'll either create or update resource groups. Set your location, central US for this example. We'll scroll down. Next, we need to supply the template location. Note you can point to a URL if the template is not part of the DevOps repo. Provide the template name, main.bicep for this example. This is the parent file that will run the modules. Provide the parameter file, main.parameters.json for this example. If these were in subdirectories, we would need to add the path. We can override parameters if we need to. Finally, let's look at deployment mode. This is a dev branch. In this example, we just want to see if it deploys without an error. We don't actually need to deploy the resources. 
we have two options. We can run a validation. That's a what if that validates the template without actually deploying a resource. Or we can deploy the resource and clean up or remove the resource if it deploys correctly. Why would we deploy one over the other? I'm not 100% sure. These are just a couple of options for running the deployment. Pick whatever suits your environment best. I will note that I have seen validations or what ifs complete without errors, but an actual deployment of the same file fails. For this first example, we'll start with simply validating the template. Our last example will run a full deployment and then a cleanup job. So change the deployment mode to validation only and click add. And before we finish up with this, add a line under task and add a display name. Once your job is set, we can save and run. Let's save the file. That will do a commit. We'll get a message about issues with a pipeline trigger. That's because we removed the trigger. We'll run the pipeline next. Make sure the branch is set to the same branch we're working in, dev for this example, and select run. Let's look at the job activity. That finished successfully. That means our template files were validated. Let's go back to the pipeline. That validates the files and for some that may be enough to trigger a pull request to main, but we're going to take this a step further. First, let's configure the job to actually deploy a resource. We'll take two steps. First, change the deployment mode to incremental. Next, we have a resource group name hard-coded into the job. Let's change that to a variable so we can use it in our cleanup job. Start by copying the name of the resource group. Next, add a line under pool VM image. Add a variable section. We'll add a variable called RG and add the value of the resource group name we just copied. Next, modify the resource group name in the first job to use the variable. Good, now we're ready to set up the second job. To create a cleanup job, go to the end of the file at the beginning of a new line. Move the cursor two spots from the left and add dash space job. Call it cleanup. Go to the next line and add steps colon under jobs. Remove any dashes that the tab to complete added. The next step does a simple cleanup by removing the resource group. We do this with an Azure CLI task. Go to tasks and search for Azure. Select Azure CLI. Select the connection we set up previously. Set the script type to shell. Change the script location to inline script. And for this, we'll use an AZ CLI command to remove the resource group. Enter AZ space group space delete space dash dash name, and then add the variable for the resource group, and then dash dash yes. This will delete the resource group. The yes at the end confirms the deletion. Notice we use the resource group variable for this command. Let's add. Make sure there's no red or yellow marks indicating a problem. If so, verify formatting and spacing. There's a couple modifications we need before we move on. First, under task, add a display name, clean up resources. In this pretend scenario, we only want to verify the deployment completed without an issue. If it deploys correctly, we can delete the resource group. But if not, we may want to see the artifacts that were created and look at the deployment history on the resource group. Those would be gone if the resource group was deleted. We're going to add a dependency so the second job will only run if the first job runs successfully. Add a line under the second job. 
to write under cleanup. Go over two spaces and add depends on. Space, enter deploy. That's the name of the first job. And remember in the pipelines, capitalization does matter. With this configuration, the second job will only run if the first job finishes successfully. Let's save the file. Next, we'll run the deployment. First, I want to verify the second job won't run if there's an error in the first. Let's go back to our repos. Verify you're in the correct branch. Let's go into the VNet directory. We'll open up vnet.bicept. Let's edit the file. Comment out location. Comments are two forward slashes. This will create an error and we should see that the second job does not run. Commit the change and go back to the pipeline. Run the pipeline. Specifying the correct branch. And run. Notice we have two jobs now, a deploy job and a cleanup job. Let's go into the first job. And we get an error right away. Let's go back to the pipeline. We got an error that the first job failed. The second job, the cleanup, was skipped. That's what we expected. Let's go back to repos. We'll go back to VNet. Open our vnet.bicep file, edit it, and remove the comments. We'll commit that. Once we've removed the comment in front of location and committed the file, let's go back to pipelines. And we'll run this pipeline again. Select the correct branch and run. Open the job if you'd like to see the progress. Deploying the Azure Bastion service takes a few minutes. Removing the resource group can also take some time. You can verify the resources are created and then removed in the portal. I'll pause here and come back once this is finished. That completed successfully. The resources were created and removed. Now that it's validated successfully, we could issue a pull request to have our code added to a test or a main branch. I hope that helps you better understand Azure Pipeline jobs, dependencies, and deploying Azure Bicep templates with a pipeline. Thanks for watching.